Yusef Al Shamari, CEO of C Markets. Good morning and thank you so much for joining us, Yusef. Uh, good afternoon, Alexander, and I'm very pleased to join you. To join you. I'm very happy to have you on the show uh, once again and a pretty important day by the way uh, the day ahead of OPEC meeting which is a long awaited OPEC meeting once again after this uh, incredibly positive uh, performance of the crude oil both benchmarks in January do you think that this performance could be repeated in February um, well thanks for having me well, uh, well we have seen last January has been the best perhaps the bullish most bullish month for crude oil prices for more than seven years. We've seen the prices uh, exceeding $90, something that we have not seen since 2014. And I would here would like to highlight one thing is that our forecast has been already that we can see $90 in the first half of this year. So this has been accelerated due to the geopolitics. So we have seen an unusual situation between Russia and Ukraine. And as you know, Russia exports more than 4.2 million barrels and, the, and if, if the United States is going to sanction Russia, then we could see more than 4 million barrels of the market from the supply market. And that has been really, has been pushing prices to unusual levels for, that we haven't seen for seven years. Now, we're coming to February and the, for Q1, let's say, overall in this month. I would say here, there's another factor that can keep prices high. That is the undersupply from OPEC Plus. Just the meeting that we, from the JTC, the joint technical meeting that we have seen today from OPEC Plus itself, has shown that there is more than 8,000 barrels that were not supplied in December. So, in fact, the OPEC w w has only delivered just over 50% from what it has promised to deliver. And if that continues in the, over the next months, I believe we could see prices going up uh, keep or keeping high and we, 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 there's no reason why it can't keep going even perhaps reaching three digits and at some point in the first half uh, as uh, predicted by some investment banks before but, and one thing here is the another an uncertainty factor is if OPECA plus is going to go ahead and ramp up production by more than 400,000 barrels and this is a possibility again it, it could mean that you could see some members who have spare capacities that could include Saudi Arabia, Emirates, perhaps Kuwait or Iraq, that could increase, they will increase their production more than their, the current quota. But still, the problem is not fully solved because it will not deliver all that uh, promise that they will be uh, actually agreeing to pump. Let's assume, for example, they go to uh, deliver, uh, to, to pump Let's say 800,000 bells, more than double to 400,000 bells. Still, I believe we could see 50% of that from the supply missing from the markets. But it will certainly keep the prices up or reduce the speed of price rise. Yeah, I was wondering in regards to the OPEC meeting, do you think that they're going to stick to plan uh, increase increases? Well, I mean, I is it reasonable considering prices? Well, under the current under the current conditions, I I don't see a reason why they will go to increase their production by more than four hundred thousand barrels. They have an agreement that has been working, and we have seen the statements from the Saudi Energy Minister just a couple of weeks ago saying that Saudi Arabia will not compensate for missing supplies of, from other countries. So I am uh, let, I'm, let, let's say it is in, in my view it is less likely that they will go up by more than 400,000 barrels. And just uh, another factor here is that these, there's a, that which could keep them also sticking to the agreed plan is possibility now we, we could be seeing some economic slowdown from China. Just look at, uh, I saw Brent prices just uh, a, while, a moment ago and they were less than uh, $90, around trading at around $88. And I believe here the China situation is uh, important, the real estate crisis in China and the possibility of Chinese economic slowdown in 2022 may, may also keep the group a bit uh, cautious when ramping production by more than 400,000 barrels. Uh, Yusef, I was really wondering, do you think the prices rally that we saw once again for both benchmarks, but if we had to focus on US benchmark, which is the WDI, do you think that this um, rally might revive the shale oil producers? Um, that's a possibility. Yes, so we could see uh, U.S. production picking up. And if we see the latest readings from the EIA, 
from the United States Administration Information that production of the United States is almost 12 million barrels. And if prices continue to go three digits, I believe we could see shale or the United States production above 12 million barrels, um, especially if the U.S. administration is willing to keep gasoline prices down. And I believe possibly the U.S. Uh, production or the strategy within the U.S. production will be revisited and we could see a ramp up production from the United States. In final take, um, you, you just mentioned the geopolitical tensions. I just wanted to highlight the Russia-Ukraine tensions, which are automatically Russia-U.S. Um, tensions, if you want to call them like that, or the NATO countries, uh, not only, of course, the United, uh, the United States. I was wondering, um, do you think a military escalation of the conflict might have a negative impact on oil prices, or it's just um, regarded to the natural gas? Certainly, natural gas is a huge factor over there, specifically. Uh, for, for Europeans? Um, well, certainly any m geopolitical escalation or military intervention now between Russia and Ukraine will certainly lead to uh, an escalation in prices because you would see the United States sanctioning Russia and that means we could see a supply shortage from uh, by slightly more than 4 million barrels. In addition, also gas supplies from Russia could also be at risk and that means there could be more switch to oil, so I believe it can lead to a major supply disruption, and I, that could send the prices to three digits if that situation or that scenario happens. Thank you very much, Yusef Al-Shamari, CEO of C Markets. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day ahead. Always a pleasure, Alexander. Thanks for having me.